Get a fast sound check, keep your ears fresh, and make your mix great. Today I'm going to show you how to preset your drum EQs on whatever console you're on. This is my starting place so that when I pull up my drums, I can get the tones fast and I can keep moving. Now, before we get started on specific drums, it's important to understand what happens with every drum. Every drum has a fundamental frequency. This is the lowest note that the drum resonates at. It's related to how the drum is tuned and the size of the shells. On the top end, we have the attack, and it's a high frequency smack from the stick or the hand hitting the drum. Now, in between there, we have the drum's tone. These are the overtones and the resonant frequencies that are above the fundamental that gives the drum its feeling or its tone. Now one thing that I do on every drum is cut 250 hertz. It just helps take the flabbiness out. Let's go ahead and get started on our presets for our drum EQs. This is what I'm going to do before I hear any sound through the console. I'm just automatically going to do it. Let's jump in. On the kick drum, I'm going to go ahead and cut 250 because I cut 250 on every drum. Now also, the, there's a cardboardy sound or between 400 and 800 on every kick drum. Let's go to 500 and cut that. This makes room for the overtones of the bass as well, which is important for getting our relationship right between the kick drum and the bass. One of my favorite things is it's all about the low end. If you get that right, everything else falls into place. Now, I used to be able to say it's all about that bass, but somebody ruined that for me. For the fundamental of a kick drum, it's gonna depend on uh, how much sub I have, how much sub I want for my audience, and what, what resonance really fits well with that drum. I'm gonna start the fundamental uh, right around 50 hertz. I might move up uh, from there, but it just depends. For the kick drum's attack, I'm gonna go to 4K and put it there. That's kind of in the middle of the road. Sometimes if it's a more soft acoustic sound, I'm gonna go for more toward 2K. If it's gonna be more of a bitey kick drum to cut through, I'm gonna go more up to 10K, but 4K is a good even starting place. Starting on my snare drum, I'm going to go ahead and take my low mid band and cut 250. And I'm going to have my presets on my upper two middle bands, 2.5K and 5K. Sometimes the way that a drummer tunes their drum to get the beef out of it, it lacks a little bit of that crack, and we can add it back in for them. If you've listened to the snare drum and you already know it's ringing and you already know you want that ring to come out, go ahead and set one of your EQ bands to 500 hertz. This will kill it real quick. For my low frequency, I'm going to have it set right around 100, maybe all the way up to 125. If I need to add a little beef to the snare drum, this is my starting place. For my snare bottom, I'm really going to wait to listen to it before I make any EQ changes, other than going to 250 and cutting. For my toms, if I'm wanting a rock tom sound, I'm going to cut as much mid-range out as possible. So here's how I do it. I'm going to cut 250, and then with my next band up, I'm going to cut somewhere around 600 on a rack tom and somewhere around 400, 500 on a floor tom. This really gets rid of a lot of the overtones that are gonna cloud up the mix. Toms are typically played as a fill. So when they come in, they, you want them to get in and get out and nobody gets hurt. Just having the fundamental and the attack can really help it cut through. For overheads, you can use one of two approaches. Some guys like to have the overheads capture the entire kit. So they're getting some of the bottom end and some of the tone off of all the drums in the kit. The other way to set up your drum sounds is to use the overheads as cymbals only mics. In that case, I'm going to run my high pass filter up all the way and I'm going to uh, cut out everything below 2K. So there we go. Before I've heard any drum sounds, I already have all my EQs preset for what I want to listen to. Now let's play some tracks back and see how we can adjust each one of those to get what we need. Let's start with the kick drum. It's not too bad. Let's take the EQ out to see what that cut in the mid-range did for us. Here it sounds like cardboard. Ain't nobody got time for that. Now while this is fine, we might want to enhance it a little bit. So we're going to boost some of the bottom end to get some of that girth out of it.
Now that feels good, but it's rumbling just a little bit much. So I'm gonna roll my high pass filter up just a little bit further. Some people wonder why you might put a high pass filter on the kick drum. You want all that low end, right? Well, sometimes the subharmonic frequencies can clutter up the clarity of the punch of the kick drum. So adding a little bit of high pass filter a little bit higher can help tighten up that bottom end so that it's not so flabby. Now that we've taken care of the low end and the mid range on our kick drum, we can focus on the attack, the beater sound or the snap or the click that's gonna help give it definition and stand out in a mix. Let's take a listen. That's 4K, it gives us a nice snap. See how that's a little brighter? I went up an octave to 8K. Now if I go down to 2K, it's gonna be a little gentler. I tend to like it right around 4K for the music that I mix. Now let's move on to the snare drum. Snare's a little dull, it's got a little bit of thud to it, and I'm not really happy with how well it's really hitting me in the chest or cutting through. So let's see what we can do about it. I'm gonna add a little bit of 2.5K and a little bit of 4K, 5K, somewhere in there, to try to get a little bit more of the snap out, make it kind of jump out at me. I'm happy with the top end of the snare now. Let's now try to get a little bit more punch out of it. There's our snare that we've EQ'd after listening to it. Now let's listen to the original and hear the difference. Feels a lot better with the EQ. It's really gonna punch through our mix now. Now I'm happy with my snare top. Let's mix in the snare bottom and see what happens. It feels nice. I like how the snares give it a little bit more sustain on the top end, but the snare did seem to get thinner. Let's check flipping the polarity and see if that helps get it beefy again. You can tell right away that our snare's bottom end came back when we flipped the polarity switch. Really important to check your polarity on all your drum mics when setting up. Now, depending on the song, I might want to make that, those snares brighter or I might want to turn them off altogether. Uh, it's really a matter of taste and what fits with the song, but this one, this bottom mic just sounds good how it is. So if you're going to apply some of these tips and get set before you start, type preparation fuels inspiration in the comments below. Let's move on to our toms. Now, unfortunately on this song, the drummer didn't play the high tom at all. So we'll just have to look at the low tom. Working on toms can get pretty monotonous. So let's try to work quickly. Now on the tom, we already did some EQ. So let's listen to what it was like before we EQ'd it. And then I'll put in my preset. So the tom rings quite a bit and it's got two notes on the bottom end. Let's try to get rid of one and just focus on the other so that we can get it a little bit tighter and a little bit less cluttery when our fills come.
All right, so if I had my way, I would just retune this tom. But you don't always have that luxury, so you kind of just have to make do with what you got. It's not the best, but I'm okay with it. Now the next thing I'm going to do is, much like the kick drum and the snare drum, I'm going to add a little bit of attack so that it kind of jumps out in those fills and we get that stick hit so that each note that the tom plays is heard loud and clear. All right, now let's listen to the tom in the context of the other drums that we've EQ'd so far. Now let's hear what it sounds like without the high pass filter and the rest of the drums. Do you hear how it kind of goes on forever and gets in the way of the other hits? Shortening it with the EQ is one way to help that. Now you could also address it with a gate, but gates get tricky in case somebody starts playing quietly, you might miss some of those notes. It's one tool to use, but it's not my first go-to. Now let's bring up our overhead mics. Let's listen to them just by themselves, just have the cymbals, and then we'll roll the high pass filter back down so you can hear what it sounds like of it picking up all the rest of the drums on the kit. It's really nice to have that brightness come back after not having any of it and only getting the spill from the other drum mics. Now let's take our high pass filter back down and hear what it sounds like and what the overheads are doing to the tone of the other drums, specifically the snare drum. Now it changed the tone of the other drums, but let's check our polarity to make sure that we're not making our snare thinner with the overheads rather than thicker. I feel like the snare drum got better when we flipped the polarity on the overheads. Now, it's up to you. It's your personal preference. There's no right or wrong way. But to me, thicker is better, and I always want to go that direction. So now let's listen to our drum kit with all our EQ applied compared to how it was before we added any EQ. Check it out. Now I'll turn off all the EQs and we can listen to what it sounded like before. That's not terrible, but let's try again with our EQs on. I think that's pretty fantastic for a starting place. Now this is no compression, no effects, nothing, just EQ. Today's episode is brought to you by Dyslexics Untied. Dyslexics Untied, where we think we have more executive power than everyone else on election day. Hey, thanks for watching this drum EQ tutorial. I hope it really helps you next time you're preparing for sound check. If you liked it, hit the thumbs up, be sure to click subscribe and hit the little bell to get notified every time I post a new video. If you'd like to take your church sound team to the next level, download my free guide, How to Lead Your Church Sound Team. Links in the description below. And don't forget to comment below and let me know what topics you'd like to see covered in future videos. I'm here to serve you so that you can make worship sound great, be a great team player, and do your part in building the kingdom of God. We'll see you next time.